Okay, well here we finally are at step six. <clears throat> I'm basically just going to add in the detail parts, which would be like the hoops under the ears, the tubes, these little cooling radiator fin type things. We're just going to kind of talk about that in more detail. So let me get you, uh, let me get you situated closer to the screen. Hang on. Be a bumpy ride. I think. I think we're just about there. Okay. So basically, we're going to do this in <clears throat> two steps. This base plate piece here gets printed on your printer as a flat piece. I think I've got a picture of that. Here we are. See my Prusa. Just print them. Doesn't matter what color you print them in, and then go ahead and paint them. A matching color to whatever you're doing your uh, Robbie machine in. Now, as far as the hoops go, I did those, the ones that you just saw in this picture right here, these are actual, actually quarter inch acrylic rod, which is dirt cheap to buy, that uh, I thermal formed and bent. It's actually much quicker to do all 12 of these cut and bend in your toaster oven at home or a hot air gun or whatever you want than it is to 3D print them. Plus if you 3D print them on an FDM printer they're not going to be clear they're going to be frosted white as we all know. I think I've got... Uh, here we go. Started with some short sections of quarter inch rod. Built myself a little trim block where when I heat these up in the toaster oven I can then lay them in here. This is actually deep enough that I can lay three in at a time. And then uh, once they've cooled down, I've got two slots that I can come back and use as my trim slots. In my case, I'm using a bandsaw. But of course, you could use any sort of little saw you want to trim them off. And uh, this is a forming block for some other parts we'll be talking about here in a minute. There's the little toaster oven. The thing about heating um, clear acrylic is you don't want to try to heat it too fast and you don't want to heat it too hot. Um, if you heat it too hot or too fast, then you'll end up getting all kinds of bubbles on the surface. So, if you take three or four minutes to let it warm up to like a 170, 180 degrees Fahrenheit, it's not super hot, you'll be okay. In this case, this toaster oven was a double decker toaster oven. I was using the top one because it was the smallest. Well, the top one isn't actually temperature controlled. When you turn it on, it's on. So I kind of had to watch it. I had a couple of them that I got let to get too hot and they got all bubbly. So there's a uh, plastic sitting down in the rod so you can see how I could come back and just zip, zip. And then I'd have my hoop trimmed to the right size. Where are you going, well, how do, I, how do I go making this block? Well, I have the file for the hoop in case you want to 3D print them on your FDM printer. Or if you have a resin printer, I suppose you could just print them in clear and be done that way. But again, well, the good thing about a resin printer is you could probably put all 12 of these hoops on the plate. And a resin printer takes the same amount of time if it's printing one part or if it's printing 12. It doesn't make any difference. What if you can put on the plate? <clears throat> it's based on the height. So if they were all standing upright like little happy arches, you could print them all at once. But anyway, if you print it on the FDM printer, you could use that one as your model for making some uh, wood blocks or something for heat forming. There's what happens if you uh, let it get in there too long or too, which is the same as too hot or try to heat it too fast you'll end up with all these uh, surface imperfections. Okay now we're talking about the cooling radiator fin parts on the front that come out of the sax valve rest. There's four short ones. I decided to uh, make the models actually one piece but I split it so I could print it on my FDM printer this way that way I wouldn't need any supports and then just glue the two halves together to make one. But you can see they look frosted and they look frosted on my built machine. What I plan on doing is when I get a resin printer I'm going to go ahead and take this file because I'll put this file up on thing of both as this split version and as a one piece solid version. I would try printing them in um, on a resin printer and clear as one piece and see how they turn out, see how clear they turn out. They might be quite nice, you never know. 
Of course, on the original Robbie, these are uh, lathe turned in clear acrylic and then flame polished. And there we have what it looks like when it's off the uh, build plate and glued together. Doesn't look too bad. This end goes down into the bottom of the uh, glues to the uh, Robbie machine base. And this end is where the clear acrylic tubing goes in. The hole goes in about four millimeters or so. This is a lathe turned flame polished part compared to uh, the FDM printed part. So you can get an idea of what the clarity difference and what the effect would look like. So now we're doing the, uh, the tubes that run from the Saks valves down to those little radiator cooling parts that we just made. And the, the outside ones, the ones clear out um, on the sides of the Robbie's uh, Saks rest, there are long ones and then there's some shorter ones. So again, you want to just make a block with a right angle bend in it and uh, a couple of different places that you'd trim the part at, depending on whether you're doing the, the short one or the long one. And uh, once again, I do uh, have files up on Thingiverse for this part if you wanted to try to print it. I actually haven't printed the files for these parts. So uh, even though I've cut them up and drawn them and looked at them, they look right. I'm just letting you know I never actually printed them because I already had some a quarter inch clear acrylic and like I say it's dirt cheap and this is a this is a hundred times faster than waiting for a 3D printer to make this part. I mean you take this part put it in the toaster oven three or four minutes later you can throw it in your wood block form and boom you're done. In the case of something like this that just has a right angle bend I don't know why you couldn't just take a heat gun and start with a long piece like this and say apply some heat right about here and when it's about right, bend it around something that has a slight curve to it. Uh, a bottle, a jar, a battery, uh, a, a table edge, something. And just form a bunch of them and then, you know, cut them to fit. So there's uh, showing the two long ones and the two short ones. Then there's the long radiator piece that goes <clears throat> back behind those uh, cooling fins. So you definitely want to do this part first and it's the one that has the really strange tubing that that comes out and mounts it to it but again um, on the FDM printer I split the file so I could print it without supports and then just glue the two pieces together and here are the two pieces glued together down here and here's what an actual clear acrylic part that's been uh, turned on the lathe and then flame polished would look like I mean, that's always an option. It just costs you more money. And I believe that's pretty much the end of the picture show because those are the parts. Um, swing this camera around here. Pull back out. So you can, as you can see on the, uh, on the side parts here, I just glued them to the upper part of the body. That way if I take the screws out to get the ear cups off or something, this piece can come off with it and wouldn't uh, keep me from removing from here. You could always put a screw down here in the bottom if you wanted to secure this panel into the base piece. I'm not worried about it, so I didn't. And here we are back around at the front. You can see this piece is going to be, a, it is a file that's up on Thingiverse. It's some, got some strange bends because you've got this initial length and bend here that goes back in about a 45 and then has to bend back in to meet up with this radiator piece that tucks up behind everything. Uh, what else? I've had a lot of questions about the wiring. Of course, the wiring on this thing is super basic. Um, I originally designed this to work in the 4.5 to 6 volt range. My idea was thinking that I would probably use three D cell batteries. This is way back when I was starting to run mine at about 4.5 volts. And that probably most of the builders out there these days would probably be operating this thing off of 5 volts. Probably UPS, so like a power bank or, or a wall wart that puts out 5 volts or, you know, something like that. But uh, in this case, I had uh, some double battery holders, C-cell, you know, uh, battery holder that holds two C-cell batteries. That's what I had laying around. 
So I glued two of those back in there, which means I have four batteries in series, which means I have six volts. So I've been running this, this on six volts, which is a little bit faster on most of the actions than I want, but it's fine. Eventually those batteries are going to wear down and I'll be back at five volts. And uh, so everything has a common ground. I took all my negative wires from the LEDs, from the motors, brought all those together and connected them to the negative wire from my battery pack. My two battery packs are wired in series to give me the six volts. Then I took the positive wires from each section. Say the scanner rings have one positive wire section that applied power to both motors and the uh, LEDs. Brought that down to a switch. On the other side of the switch, it went to the positive lead of my batteries. I did the same thing for, for the um, sax valves and did the same thing for the gyro section. You could break it down even further if you wanted. You could uh, you could have a switch just for the dome light. So you could have your dome light on without any of the motors running, making any sort of noise or anything, for example. So you could have, and there's enough switch holes on the back of the base. I have three on each side. So I mean, you can have up to six switches in this thing. So you could have your dome light as one switch, your gyro motors as one switch. You could have uh, one switch for uh, the scanner, for each scanner rings, or the scanner rings, or the beam lights separately, but the beam lights aren't going to flash unless the scanner rings are running with the, the cam switch is connected, actually connected to the scanner ring over on that side, the horizontal one. Um, sax valve lights, yeah, you could break that down. You could have these lights on all the time just for display, like a dome light and the sax lights could stay on. You could have a switch for those, and then you wouldn't have to hear the motors running if you just wanted it for display. So you could break it down any way you want. It's just super basic stuff. And I think that about wraps it up. If any of you guys successfully make it through a build, I'd love to see uh, pictures or a YouTube or some sort of post about it. I don't Facebook, but if you gave me a link, I'm sure I could, well, maybe I can't. Some of the groups won't let you view their stuff unless you join, so scratch that. I don't Facebook for that reason. Um, anytime you have to join something before you even know if there's anything in that something that you're interested in, that's uh, that rubs me the wrong way. Okay, I think that's it. Have fun. See you guys later.